So welcome along everybody to Donington Park. MSVT Track Day Championship is out there on circuit for their opening round of the 2024 championship season. A huge grid of cars has been assembled. Some 33 cars took to qualifying this morning for which the father and son pairing of George and Jack Wright in their Volkswagen Golf qualified on pole position. They were about half a second quicker than the BMW 1 Series of Matt Swaffer that lines up on the outside of the front row of the grid. Let's give you then the full grid. So it's the pairing of George and Jack Wright that are on pole. Matt Swaffer's there in second place. Uh, on the second row of the grid, it's uh, Roberts and Nicole Drought alongside the McHugh number 39 car. Row three of the grid sees John Line line up against uh, the number 91 Porsche. Colin Tesla sharing that car with Roman Quinn. And it's the number 90 car and the reigning champion that lines up on row number four, Donovan. The fifth row of the grid, on the inside of the fifth row, it's car number 92, which is Ben Abbott, and he's got Charlie Polk for company. And row six of the grid, it's the number three car, which is Alan Ball, lining up alongside the car of Kevin Sterling, the number 53 Renault. The next row of the grid sees the number 21 car, which is Wayne Cockrell, lining up alongside the number 12, which is Scott Thompson and Ben Johansson. And row eight of the grid, it's number 38, which is Henry Wright and John Glover, uh, sorry, uh, Kevin Glover, I should say, lining up alongside the number 62 car, which will be Alex Turnbull in the Ginetta. The next row of the grid, it's number 153, which is going to be Stephen Docker. He has got the number 99 car for company, which is Ben Jenkins. And uh, the 10th row of the grid is number 16, which is Alistair Eason, alongside 67, which is the car that David Abbott shares with Hayden McDonald. We don't know the starting drivers for these cars, by the way. Colin Wells is next up. He lines up alongside the number 19 car of Cameron Bell. And row 12 of the grid, it's the number 25 car, which is the pairing of James Burnham and Ben Vos that lines up. And you can see all the rest of the cars that are lining up on what is a very, very full grid indeed. We're not going to be able to get through them all because already most of the grid is formed up and we're about to get this 45-minute race underway that opens up the championship season. It's a 45-minute race. There is a mandatory pit stop in the middle of it where you have to stop in the pit lane for a set period of time. You cannot go beneath that, uh, whether you are solo driving, as many of them are, or whether you are sharing the car. And we'll have to wait and see as to how this one pans out. So you can see at the very tail end of the field, the Honda Civic of Amy Allen is lining up another one of the Tyler Motorsport cars. I think the grid is fully formed, which means we're about to get the 2024 season for the MSVT Track Day Championship underway so cars are on the grid lights are on revs rise and the 2024 track day championship season is go it doesn't look as though it's a bad start from the outside of the front row of the grid the rear wheel drive car of matt swaffer initially gets the jump on the car of george and jack wright as they head up towards redgate corner for the first time but it's going to be the volkswagen golf that leads the way and i think john line and his bmw might just slot through in the blue bmw through into second place by the look of things they charge their way on the top of hollywood and it does look as though, yes, it's the George and Jack Wright Volkswagen that leads the way. It is John Line that's through into second position. And third at the moment looks as though it's a Honda Civic, which is the number 70 car that Justin Roberts shares with Nicole Drought, I think, that's come through into second place as they all descend downhill for the first time. There goes the number 38 Ford Fiesta that we mentioned as we went through the grid. But already you can start to see that the... George and Jack Wright Volkswagen Golf is opening up a very slight early lead and advantage over the rest of the pack as they all work their way through McLean's corner and up towards Coppice for the first time. Tail end of the field, we've still got Amy Allen at the wheel of her Honda Civic trying to hunt down the Ford Fiesta that lies just ahead. But everybody certainly has just worked their way and avoided making contact with any, anybody on what is a very, very busy grid indeed. So lap number one about to be chalked into the book. Having started on the outside of the front row of the grid, I think Matt Swaffer is going to come through at the end of the first lap down in something like fourth position, is he? Yeah, he's in fourth place, but he's under pressure from the Porsche that lies behind, which is the Colin Tester Ronan Quinn car that appears to be puffing out just a very small amount of smoke by the look of things. There's a good attempt there to try and steal second place away from John Line from the Honda Civic of Justin Roberts and Nicole Drought, but can't quite make it through. So, again, downhill. John Line who's been a regular part of this championship for a very, very good number of years, cannot shake away Justin Roberts at the moment. Be Nicole Drought as well, who's done a lot of rallying as Nicole Drought over the course of her career so far. There goes the number 98 car as well, which is Charlie Polk. He's looking to try and do good things. So having started in 11th place, 
he had lost the place and was down into 12th. The big mover on the first lap was the number 12 car, which made really good progress through the order. That's the Pro-Am racing Scott Thompson and Ben Johansson, Renault Clio. So they gained four places on the first lap. And another car that gained lots of places was the number 14 car of Chris Reed. His Mini Cooper, Cooper, the Wolf Motorsport car, was up six places at the end of the first lap. Lead advantage was one and a quarter seconds at the end of lap number one. So the George and Jack Wright shared Volkswagen Golf heads over the start finish line and what was a 1.2 second advantage is now going to have increased surely it is going to be a further advantage I don't think the transponder's working on that car that leads the race because it's tumbling down through the order which suggests that it hasn't registered as it's come over the start finish line so the timekeepers will be trying to slot that in at the moment so we'll tell you what the lead advantage is as and when the timekeepers have manually reinserted what is the race leading car you can just see the variety that you get amongst the track day trophy which is a really good place to start racing likes of Volkswagen, BMW, Honda, Lotus, Porsche, Toyota, Mazdas uh, and Peugeots all amongst it and we've got an MG in there and let's not forget the Minis and the Ginettas as well so as ever there's always somebody to race with out there Wayne Cockrell's found somebody to play with at the moment and that's Charlie Polk so Wayne Cockrell at the wheel of one of several Toyota Celicas hot on the heels of the all-white Renault Clio in the hands of Charlie Polk Hasn't quite been able to squeeze his way through as yet, though. It's a good fight going on for second and third and fourth and fifth. John Lines trying to fight off the aspirations of the Justin Robertson, the cold route car. Then you've got Matt Swaffer, who's trying to keep at bay the Colin Tester and Ronan Quinn car. The Porsche of Colin Tester and Ronan Quinn almost draws itself alongside Matt Swaffer there, who's a former production BMW champion some years ago, Matt has regularly raced in BMWs but we've also seen him out racing in another one of the MSVT championships which is the Enduro KA category for a while somebody running very wide in the background bouncing over the kerbs we even got some of the new gen Renault Clios as you can see racing with us over the course of this weekend and one car going very slowly there in towards the Robert Chicane suggests that there might be somebody destined for the pits at the end of this lap and that could possibly be Kevin Sterling does make me wonder, yeah, Kevin Sterling is tumbling through the order at the moment. And I think the number 53 car is about to peel its way into the pit lane in the hands of the Scotsman who resides down in Norfolk nowadays. Alex Turnbull at the wheel of his Ginetta is working terribly hard to try and see if there's a way to prise the door open on the Ford Fiesta that sits just ahead of him as they descend downhill he needs to be careful though because if he tries a move and it doesn't quite work out poised and ready to pounce is the number 153 Stephen Docker driven Mazda MX-5 that sits directly behind the Mark III you can see that whilst it's a 1.8 litre Ginetta up against the 2 litre Mazda nothing to choose between them at this stage so the first five minutes already having gone Henry Wright and Kevin Glover's Fiesta Club racer team entered machine still working hard they are trying to keep another Mazda at bay which is going to be Alistair Eason's car that's the all silver car that lies just behind that's going to be a fight for 15th and 16th places as they are about to head over the start finish line and complete lap number four before too much longer so onto the brakes down a couple of gears pitch it in towards the left and the right flicks at the Robert chicane use all of the curves but don't go onto the green concrete avoid those tyre stacks on the inside and also the big metal kerbs you can't quite see. You've got the white and red painted kerbs. Now, the smoke's getting worse there, isn't it? For Colin Tester and Ronan Quinn's Porsche, that smoke is looking as though it's getting worse. Now, that may well attract the attentions of the officials. Difficult to see whether it's coming out of the exhaust or whether it might be something dropping onto the exhaust, but that is not good. And if there's any question mark that that car might be dropping any lubricant onto the circuit, there'll be a black and orange meatball flag that will be displayed for that car, and that will mean they'll have to within three laps come into the pit lane to have the problem investigated. Doesn't mean they can't rejoin the race, but they need to satisfy the scrutineers that whatever the problem is, is sorted. And it doesn't look as though that's coming out the exhaust. I think that might be something dropping on for out of the engine bay of that rear engine car on towards the exhaust. And it's probably all burning off, but it does need checking as to what it might be. Brilliant fight still going on for what is second, third, fourth, fifth still together. John Line at the front of that little queue and all the way down through the order there are some brilliant battles we were talking about the Ginetta working to try and shake away the Ford Fiesta well it's done that now and it's now hot on the heels of the blue Mazda MX-5 that lies ahead and I 
think that may well be a shuffle for the order. The Ginetta looking to try and squeeze its way through, but in towards the chicane that time through, there's just not enough of a gap to squeeze through and pass the David Abbott and Hayden McDonald Mazda MX-5. In a straight line as the Ginetta got the legs, you wouldn't have thought so on the Mazda. David Abbott and Ben McHayden's Abbott Motorsport number 67 car still holding the line, but up the inside, I think the Ginetta might just squeeze through here, and Alex Turnbull does gain the place. So up a position he goes. And now that will move him up into 18th position, I think that will be. 19th place is only just, uh, sorry, 18th position, 17th place is only just up the road, though, and that's the Toyota MR2, which is the number 19 car in the hands of Cameron Bell. And Cameron Bell has got his hands rather full as well because he's desperate to try and get past Ben Jenkins at the wheel of the LDR Performance Tuning, newer gen, Renault Clio. A car that may well appear in another one of the MSVT championships that's due to launch for this year, which is the Renault Clio Cup UK. So out of McLean's corner, this is a fight for, was it 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th places. All line astern for the moment. But the man who looks as though he's got the pace at the moment is the Ginetta. I think Alex Turnbull's going to have another little nibble here to see if he can work his way through and pass Cameron Bell's Toyota. He's almost drawn himself alongside it. He's got the inside line. He's going to be ahead by the time they get towards the braking area and trying to follow him through as late as he can on the brakes is the Mazda MX-5, which is going to be the David Abbott and Hayden MacDonald car. Side by side through the Robert chicane. And I think three of them are still together as they come over the start-finish line. Brilliant fighting, giving each other just about enough room. And you can see immediately that they've started to squabble. How much further away Ben Jenkins has gone at the wheel of his Renault Clio. He's already disappeared another, what, four or five car lengths up the road. You need to be careful with those track limits, though, at Redgate Corner. You can see a few of them just running a little bit wide coming out of the corner beyond the red and white painted kerb line, which indicates the, the edge of the circuit. Diving their way back downhill once more, with already 10 minutes having elapsed. Race leader has already completed six racing laps. Out of the old hairpin and building the speed again. James Burnham and Ben Voice's Green Star Racing Ford Fiesta, which is the orange one, trying to work its way through the order. Uh, and also another good battle going on, and that's the reigning champion, which is Stuart Donovan. He has got just ahead of him the number 92 Honda Integra DC5, which is Ben Abbott. So over the start-finish line, they work their way. Honda from Toyota. Then it's Honda from Renault Clio thereafter. And that will be the number 90 car, which will be Nathan McPhail in his Honda CRX. And he's got behind him. That looked like the number 12 Renault Clio that was behind, which is the Pro-Am car of Scott Thompson and Ben Johansson. So this is going to be 8th, 9th, and then shortly afterwards, 10th and 11th, all busy beavering away at this stage. Best lap of the race so far has gone to the race leader. So the George and Jack Wright Volkswagen Golf, the pair of Yorkshiremen. George is the father, Jack is the son. One minute 19.822. That was set a couple of laps ago now. But on this lap, John Lyne at the wheel of the second place BMW may well eclipse that because he has gone absolute best through the first sector of the lap. Lost a bit of time through the second sector of it. But the BMW's going well at the moment, and he needs to in second place because he's got cars queuing up behind. So Ben Abbott feeling the pinch. Stuart Donovan, the reigning champion, who secured the championship at the very final round last year. Squeezing his way around, tries the outside going in towards the Robert Chicane, almost bumbles over the curves, which slows his exit speed. And all of a sudden, he's gobbled up. He's looking to gain a place, and he's lost one. And I think he's probably lost two there, actually. And you can see in the pit lane on the right-hand side, the Porsche is in. So I did wonder when Colin Tester and Ronan Quinn's Porsche would be destined for the pit lane. The answer is, it is now. Nathan McPhail still pushing hard at the wheel of the Honda. Ran a little bit wide, though, coming out of Redgate Corner. And that gives the opportunity for the Pro-Am Racing Renault Clio to try and squeeze its way through. They lean on each other through Hollywood. They lean on each other through the Craner Curves. A little bit sideways for the number 12 Clio, which gets tipped into a spin as it loses traction. And often into the gravel trap in avoidance. Might just avoid making contact with the tyres. Now a bump into the tyres for the Honda. Keeps his foot down and I think should, in the hands of Nathan McPhail, drag its way back out of the gravel trap. It does, and hopefully there's not too much damage to that car because it was a light side swipe with the tyres and 
That was all to do with the pair of them going wheel to wheel through the Craner curves. I don't think there was any contact at all. I think it was just the fact that the Pro-Am Racing Scott Thompson and Ben Johansson car just lent on its tyres a bit too much going down through the Craner curves and it just unloaded at the tail end and went light. And then, of course, the Honda had to take to the grass in avoidance. Both cars got away with it. But unfortunately, the innocent party took a longer trip through the gravel trap and hopefully, hopefully, there's no real damage to the car. There'll be a few little dints and scrapes on it, but nothing, hopefully, that preclude its involvement further in the race. Now, the number 12 Renault Clio was ninth as it came over the start-finish line last time through. This time through, as it goes over the start-finish line, it's going to have dropped down into 12th position, I think. 11th place, actually. So... It will look to try and close upon Wayne Cockrell's Toyota that lies ahead. And there is Wayne, another driver who's been racing in the MSVT Track Day Championship for a good period of time. Now, that was definitely beyond the circuit limits there. And there's a little bit more contact going in towards the Robert Chicane, I'm afraid. And another car has to take a spin in avoidance. I think it's Alistair Eason that went round. The car that went straight on into the gravel trap recovers. And I think for a split second was going to head towards the pit lane, but decided against it. So that got a little bit close there. But I think, again, thankfully, everybody got away with it and places gained as a result for the likes of the Toyota MR2, which is the number 19 car in the hands of Cameron Bell. And also gaining out of that one would have been the number 25 Ford Fiesta, which was the Green Star racing car of James Burnham and Ben Voice. You can see their orange Ford Fiesta is now up and ahead of the Toyota. So that will be a change now for 15th and 16th positions with half an hour to go. So, close racing all the way through the order. Still the pit window as well that everybody needs to deal with. The Porsche going no further by the look of things. So that's being pushed down the pit lane. So whatever the problem was that was causing the smoke to come from that Porsche, which had qualified well, hadn't it, in seventh position. And, of course, all of that weight over the drive axle when the lights went out made good progress. But days done early, I'm afraid, in round one of the 2024 Truck Day Championship for that car. Again, the Renault Clio running wide there, so Pro-Am Racing, Scott Thompson and Ben Johansson need to be careful. That's two laps on the trot where they seem to have run a little bit wide at Redgate Corner. No suggestion at the moment that there's a track warning going out for them. But if they keep running wide, there will be a black and white flag, I'm sure, displayed to warn them to stay within the confines of the circuit. And then if they don't heed that warning, then, of course, you start to build up the seconds and they become ever more draconian, the penalties. So a five-second penalty, a ten-second penalty. A further 10-second penalty. Could be a drive-through penalty as well. Mazda v Mazda in towards Redgate corner. Alistair Eason feeling the pinch, but just managing to hold off Colin Wells at the wheel of the BC Cars Motorsport silver and purple machine. So they'll be fighting over the final two places inside the top 20 at the moment. Cars that we see racing not just in the MSVT Track Day Trophy, but also in another MSVT Championship, the Mayata Trophy as well. I'm sure we'll see these cars out in over the course of the 2024 season. Now our race leading Volkswagen Golf, George Stroke Jack Wright, 6.8 seconds to the good at the moment. But in second place, John Line has not shaken away the number 70 uh, Honda Civic at the moment, which is Julian Roberts and Nicole Drought. So that's another good battle that's still going on right at the sharp end of the order. Whilst we keep an eye on what's going on for the final couple of places inside the top 20 at the moment. Alistair Eason looking to try and squeeze his way through. Uh, in fact, that's Stephen Docker, I think, trying to squeeze his way through. Replay Quick replay of the incident that we saw earlier on where the Pro-Am racing car went round. Was there any contact between the pair of them? Difficult to tell from that angle, but the Clio already looked as though it was a little bit out of control just before the camera angle disappeared. A full 360 degree spin almost was it for the Clio and then the Honda Civic taking a wild ride through the gravel trap in the hands of Nathan McPhail and eventually rejoining. So Alistair Eason still working away, still trying to keep Colin Wells behind. This is for the final two places inside the top 20 at the moment. Further up through the order, the recovery of the Pro-Am racing Scott Thompson and Ben Johansson car continues as they now work their way one side, then the other of Wayne Cockrell. But Wayne's got them covered off at the wheel of the Salika currently. Wayne desperate to try and stay inside the top ten at the moment. Well, he's just about doing it by the skin of his teeth, isn't he? But the Renault Clio, of course, arguably you could say is a quicker car because it was ahead of it before the spin. But Wayne Cockrell is not going to make it easy, that is absolutely for sure. 
and they are fighting for class position as well. They both are Class C cars. Wayne Cockrell's third in the class at the moment, and the Scott Thompson, Benny Hansen car is fourth in Class C at the moment. So this is the race leading car, Class B machine, all based on the power to weight ratio of the car. So Class B caters for those with between 151 and 175 brake horsepower per tonne. The rolling road at the circuit here has been very busy testing the power output of all of the cars to ensure that they sit in the appropriate class of the MSVT Track Day Championship. So the most powerful cars are Class B. Class C is for those between 126 and 150 brake horsepower per tonne. Class D is for those up to 125 brake horsepower per tonne. Then we do have a Class G as well, which is the guest class for cars that probably haven't as yet been on the rolling road, so we don't know what their BHP is. Alistair Eason side by side with Colin Wells, who's got the inside line. And finally, Colin Wells hoists himself a further place up. That's still only for 19th and 20th position, but Alistair Eason is fighting back, actually, and they've also got the cars in second and third bearing down on them. So there's a flash of the lights from John Lyne behind to say, come on, guys, make sure you look in your mirrors. You've got the quick cars coming up. The marshals will be waving the blue flags as well because John Lyne cannot afford to be held up by these squabbling Mazdas at this stage because John Lyne has got the number 70 Honda Civic of Justin Roberts and Nicole Drought right behind. Problems in the pits for somebody. Bonnet up on the Ford Fiesta. Now they've picked their way through the Mazdas who are still doing battle actually. So it hasn't broken up either the Battle of the Mazdas for 19th and 20th places. Colin Wells and Alistair Eason. It hasn't broken up the battle between John Lyne and Justin Roberts stroke Nicole Drought for second and third. So that was good overtaking there. There's Matt Swaffer. He sits there in fourth place at the wheel of the BMW. So he's the next of the cars that will squeeze his way through and pass the Mazdas. It's Class B cars occupying the top six places at the moment. The first of the Class C cars we saw it earlier on was... The Abbott Honda Integra DC5. Alistair Eason dives up the inside of Colin Wells, and this time it doesn't work. He's backwards. He's in the gravel at Roberts, and that's surely going to mean a safety car because the marshals can't really get to the car at that point, at least safely. So I do think we might have a safety car period, and for those that are already in the pit lane, that doesn't really help them because they've made the decision. That includes Cameron Bell, who's dived for the pit lane. We could all see, see just behind as a change of driver going on in one of the Mazdas as... By the look of things, a change for second and third, have we? John Lyne down to the third place. The Honda Civic sneaks its way through. And um, for Nicole Drought and Justin Roberts, that's exactly what they needed. Finally, unpicking John Lyne from second place. So it's a Volkswagen that leads. It's a Honda that's second. It's a BMW third. A BMW fourth. We haven't really mentioned fifth much as well yet, which is Alan Ball at the wheel of the Lotus Elise Series 1. There's more work to be done here, though. More backmarker lappery. Ford Fiesta that was in the pit lane with the bonnet up a while ago is back out there. David Abbott and Hayden, Cam, uh, Hayden McDonald in the process of swapping over there in the pit lane. And the safety car is coming out, I think. So safety car has been deployed. It's not quite out on circuit at the moment because it will wait until the race leader descends. However, oops, we've got a big squeal of tyres and lots of smoke. Somebody's got away with it. It's at Coppice Corner. And I think it might have been Colin Wells, possibly, at the wheel of the Mazda that had the problem at the moment. Now, this is going to be the key opportunity to come into the pit lane, and the race leader has taken that opportunity. So George and Jack Wright come in. Justin Roberts stroke Nicole Drought comes in from second. John Lyne comes in from third. Matt Swaffer comes in from fourth. So if you haven't pitted, now is absolutely the time to do it because we're safety car. Those that had already pitted before the safety car I'm afraid have made the wrong decision. Uh, they weren't to know the safety car was coming out, of course not, but you're going to lose more time pitting under green than you will pitting under the safety car. Amy Allen, who qualified at the back of the grid in a Tyler Motorsport Honda Civic, in the pit lane at the moment, having some adjustments done. Yeah, everybody else is coming in as well. So the Lotus is in, as I mentioned, which is Alan Bull. Charlie Polk comes in. The number 39 Honda Civic comes in as well, which is Paul McHugh and William Heslop was scheduled to be sharing that car. It only says McHugh on the timing screen, which makes me wonder whether there's an amendment to programme which suggests it's now driven solo. The Class C leading car, as was, heads into the pit lane as well, which is going to be the number 92 Honda Integra of Ben Abbott. In fact, already out of the pit lane goes Ben. And still a few cars that haven't pitted yet, including the club racer Ford Fiesta, the number 38 car, which is Henry Wright and Kevin Glover. More marshals on hand, right? Four marshals versus Mazda and Gravel. What's going to win here? Make that five marshals versus Mazda and Gravel. Let's give it a good old 
shove. Thanks to all of our marshals here at Donington Park. Marshals.co.uk if you want to get involved in marshalling. But five marshals pushing as hard as they can against Mazda and Gravel. And I'm afraid Mazda and Gravel win. So that will need a telehandler to come out and extract the Mazda out of harm's way. There's no damage done to the car. But it's going to delay going back green because we'll need to get the telehandler round to that part of the circuit and drag the Mazda out of harm's way. So the safety car just coming past the scene. Those that didn't fit under safety car will dive in now, I'm sure. And I'm afraid all is not well for a car that was running inside the top six. The Lotus of Alan Bull looks as though it's out of the race. Lots and lots of steam coming from the tail of that car. Right, now this coming out of the pit lane now is going to be, once we've cycled through the pit stops, this should be the battle for second, third and fourth place. The Justin Roberts and Nicole Drought Honda, John Lines BMW and then Matt Swaffer's One Series Beamer. They will, once we've cycled through all of the pit stops, be there. And there's the telltale signs of the coolant, isn't it? Yeah, there was steam. Coolant pouring out of the Lotus Elise Series 1 of Alan Bull. It's got a bit hot under the collar by the look of things. Not particularly warm day here. It's nice conditions, slightly overcast but blue skies as you can see, but still a spring-like nip in the air still at this stage. So safety car still out there at the moment. Still a few cars that haven't pitted. In fact, I think most have probably pitted now. Yeah, the number 38 Ford Fiesta did come in on that lap, so that's Henry Wright and Kevin Glover's car that came in. We've also got now pitting as well the number 68 Mazda, which took a while to come in, which is the JJTT car of Jack Stewart and Tom Pugh. And we've also now got the Zoom Boom, the telehandler, making its way to extract Alice Reesom's car out of the gravel trap. So it shouldn't take long. They're well versed at doing this, both the telehandler operator and the incident officer marshal there on the post who will hook the Mazda up and all they'll do is they'll drag it onto the Grand Prix loop so it, it doesn't take long to sort it they'll drag it onto the Grand Prix loop and then it may well be that we see Alistair Eason potentially continuing the race if he's allowed to do so by the officials 20 minutes to go though just over so let's run you down through the order once we get it all sorted it should be George and Jack Wright in there Volkswagen that continue to lead the race, the number 46 Volkswagen Golf. Second should be the number 70 Honda Civic, Justin Roberts sharing with Nicole Drought. Third should be the number 71 BMW of John Lyne. And fourth should be the number 45 BMW of Matt Swaffer. Fifth should now be Kevin Polk. The reason I'm saying should be is because we've still got a car showing is in the lead that's in the pits. And we've also got the retired Lotus still showing in sixth, which won't be rejoining. So Charlie Polk should be up into something like fifth position, despite the fact he's showing seventh on my timing screen at the moment. And then it should be the recovering Pro-Am Racing Honda, sorry, uh, Renault Clio of Scott Thompson and Ben Johansson that should be next up. Uh, after that, it will be the number 68 Mazda that we did see briefly in the pit lane, Jack Stewart and Tom Pugh. We'll see where they rejoin at this stage. And then uh, completing the top 10 at the moment is showing us car number 39, which is Paul McHugh and Will Heslop with their Honda Civic Type R. So that's the current order, or should be the order-ish of the top 10. Bit, I think as other cars have now completed their pit stop that has shuffled further by the look of things yeah it's now showing as being Stuart Donovan the reigning champion in the number one Honda uh, in the number one Toyota rather in eighth place ninth place is Wayne Cockrell in his similar Toyota and then the Thompson and Johansson Renault Clio number 12 car completing the top 10 so Charlie Pop drops to 11 and Ben Jenkins at the wheel of the newer gen Renault Clio completes the top 12 at the moment but we still haven't got the race leader behind the safety car so there's still a bit of shuffling to be done so some of those cars that are ahead of the race leader will get waved by past the safety car before too much longer because the race leader is what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve is about 15 cars back i would say off the top of my head so there's a chunk of waving by needing to be done at some stage so 18 and a half minutes of the race still to go. Our class leaders at this stage, leading class B is the overall race leading Volkswagen Golf. Leading class D at this stage is a car that has only just come out of the pit lane, which is the number 38 Ford Fiesta of Wright and Glover. Leading class C is the Honda Integra DC5, number 92 of Ben Abbott. And that should be all of the class leaders at this stage because I don't think we've got any cars running in class G for this weekend in the guest class 
Now, if the lights go out in the safety car this time, it means we're not reshuffling the order. They would usually go out around now. Right, so we're not reshuffling the order. We're going to leave it as it is. So we haven't got the train formed with the race leader at the front, which does mean that for the likes of George and Jack Wright, they're towards the tail end of this pack, and they can't overtake anybody until the start-finish line, so they might have some slower cars ahead of them, but they've just got to be patient by the look of things. And there's also a big gap in the train that's been formed, isn't there? Not everybody is as yet caught up with the tail end of the field. So this gives opportunities for some here. Over the start-finish line with 17 and a half minutes to go. George and Jack Wright's Volkswagen will be trying to thread its way through the pack. The team Rahiba Honda Civic also trying to thread its way through the order, which is Paul McHugh and Will Heslop in the number 39 car. You can see that car was weaving around again, four or five places just on the brakes going in towards Redgate Corner. The reigning champion Stuart Donovan's in that mix as well. He's the black Toyota with his lights ablaze. And he just wants to make sure that he has another solid season like he did last year, where it was almost, I think it was almost the final lap or the final couple of minutes of the racing season where he finally put himself mathematically in with a chance to claim the championship title. It really did go down to the wire in 2023 in the Track Day Championship. So the front of the train heads out of McLean's corner and up towards Coppice. Paul McHugh and William Heslop's Honda Civic is the first of those in the train at the moment. There goes the Honda Integra DC5 in the hands of Ben Abbott. That's the car that leads Class C at the moment. And that's probably a battle we need to keep an eye on as well. So he leads Class C, but right behind him now is the black and the light green Toyota, which is second in Class C. So this is going to be the lead battle in Class C. They've managed to get a Ginetta between the pair of them. So that will be Alex Turnbull's car that's between the pair of them. But once... Stuart Donovan carves his way past that, which he does rather effortlessly in a straight line because, of course, his car's got more power. The battle for the lead of Class C is on at the moment. So first and second in Class C together. Charlie Polk also trying to see whether he can sneak through and up the inside of the number 12 Renault Clear, which occupies the final place inside the top 10, which is shared between Scott Thompson and Ben Johansson. So older shape Clio against newer shape Clio. But the order remains the same. Now, through all of this and the pit stops that took place, John Lyne has picked up the lead of the race. So the BMW, the number 71 car, now leads the way. George and Jack Wright are now second, one and a half seconds back, and the Justin Robertson, the cold drought Honda Civic is third and is only another eight tenths back. So the top three are only separated by 2.4 seconds at this stage. Of course, they were right down towards the tail end of the train. So we need to try and keep an eye in the background as to what might be going on there for the overall race lead. For the lead of Class C, you can still just see just in the corner of the shot there that Honda Integra DC5 of Ben Abbott was still fighting away with Stuart Donovan. Wayne Cockrell, who is also running in Class C, his, Honda C, uh, his Toyota Celica squeezes its way through. So he's running ninth and is third in Class C currently. So the battle for the lead of Class C almost overlapping, coming in towards Redgate Corner. Ben Abbott trying to make sure he gets the car positioned, the Honda positioned appropriately, and gets the car cleanly out of Redgate Corner. He's got the reigning champion trying to work his way past, and this will be for the lead of Class C. So Honda from Toyota, first and second in Class C. This is also seventh and eighth places overall in the race, with 14 minutes to go. 20 laps now completed as well. Out of the old hairpin up towards Schwantz Curve. It's been a busy race for Colin Wells as he looks to try and squeeze his way through past the Ford Fiesta. Can't quite manage to do it, I don't think. That's the number 25 car, which James Burnham shares with Ben Voice. Or Ben Voice, I should say, Ben Voice. And then also, I think that might be for position as well, the number 55 Peugeot, that will be which is Connor Watson and Tom Churchhouse fighting away with a Honda Civic of Amy Allen. Those two cars qualified off the back of the grid. And yes, they are. They're fighting over 23rd and 24th at the moment. So Ben Abbott still doing a good job of keeping the Honda ahead of the Toyota as they continually fight away over the lead of Class C at this stage. Wayne Cockrell trying to make sure that he keeps the pesky little Jeff Ginetta behind of Alex Turnbull. But as for the race leader, here's John Lyne in the light blue BMW, the E36, coming towards us now. 
who leads the way. The Volkswagen Golf of George and Jack Wright. Three seconds behind now in second place. And the Justin Roberts and Nicole Drought Honda Civic completes the top three and is another second and a bit of shy. You can just see the pair of them there in the background. And this is working well for John Line here, building a bit more of an advantage. The last lap that he did, he was two tenths of a second quicker than the Volkswagen in second place which in turn was a tenth of a second quicker than the Honda Civic that's back on its bumper again as they head for the 22nd time down in towards the old hairpin. Matt Swaffer's not too far away either, so second, third and fourth pretty much on the same piece of real estate at the moment around Donington Park. Volkswagen Golf, Honda Civic, BMW 1 Series. 12 minutes of the race still remain. After the round here at Donington Park, then the middle of May, the 18th and 19th of May. The next round of the championship will be at Brands Hatch before it heads to Lydon Hill. MSVR having their first ever race meeting at Lydon Hill later on in the year. And then they'll have further races at Snetterton, Cadwell Park. They go out to Circuit Navarra, another one of the MSV circuits that was acquired by MSV a season or so ago. And they conclude their season back down at Brands Hatch in Kent. And that is end of October. Right, change for the lead of Class C. Stuart Donovan finally unpicks Ben Abbott for the lead of Class C. So the Toyota Celica goes through. Honda Civic down to second in Class C, and because of all of the squabbling, you can see in the background the white and the red Toyota of Wayne Cockrell has now managed to catch up almost with the pair that were squabbling over the lead of Class C, so he could be for too much longer, have first, second and third in Class C altogether. There's been a few time penalties being given out as well. One lap penalty is pending at the moment for the number 39 Honda Civic, and that can only be for a pit lane infringement. One lap penalty is pending also for Colin Wells at the wheel of his number six Mazda and the one lap penalty is also pending for number 67 which is David Abbott and Hayden McDonald's Mazda MX-5 again one can only assume for the pit stops being too short so the lead of Class C having been taken up can the reigning champion the Donovan Racing Stuart Donovan driven Toyota Celica pull a little bit further away from Ben Abbott he's already opened up a bit of daylight hasn't he as they head through the Robert Chicane on the 23rd lap of the race. Over the start-finish line, Toyota, Honda, Toyota for what will be ninth, uh, seventh, eighth and ninth places. There's our race leader, he should be trying to carve his way through as well. He comes up towards Redgate Corner, the squabble for second, third and fourth working its way through the traffic. As Matt Swaffer at the wheel of the one series tries to squeeze through and pass somebody in the approach towards Redgate Corner. I get an impression from that shot as well, just how undulating the start finish line is. You come out of the Robert Chicane and it's slightly uphill. You get to pit lane entry and then it starts to go downhill before it raises again very slightly uphill before you come in towards the braking area for Redgate Corner. MGZR running very wide indeed. That's the Hornigold's car, Robert and Ashley Hornigold. So that means that they need to just stay within the confines of the circuit. They're also in the process of being lapped there by the James Burnham and Ben Vos car, which is the number 25 Orange Ford Fiesta. Orange Ford Fiesta, but Green Star Racing is the team. Into the final 10 minutes of this race now as well. Fastest lap of the race is still with the Volkswagen Golf. George and Jack Wright sharing the car. Another pair of drivers who've also had good success in the Enduro KA series, which kicked off its championship season down at Silverstone last weekend. That series will come to Donington Park for, what is it, a four or five hour race later on in the year. George and Jack Wright, a bit more power this weekend with the Volkswagen Golf. Still got Colin Wells trying to feed his way through and past the traffic. So the number six Mazda, which is the purple and silver car, has got a one lap penalty hanging over it at the moment. So pit stop, just to confirm, would have been too short. I don't know how short it was, but that is the penalty. So car number six, car number 39, car number 67, all receiving a one lap penalty for the pit stops being too short. I said earlier on, there's a minimum amount of time that the cars have to remain stationary in the pits. And if you go underneath that time, because you're timed at pit entry, you're timed at pit exit, so you know how long the car's been in the pit lane area. If you're too short of that, one lap penalty is what you get. It sounds as though it's rather draconian, but them's the rules. John Line, the race leader, still pressing on. He's built the advantage since taking the lead. It's now up to nearly six seconds 
and he's about to put a lap on the car in 10th place, which is the Pro-Am racing car of Scott Thompson and Ben Johansson. That's the car that had the spin earlier on down through the Craner curves and towards the old hairpin. So that car now in 10th place goes a lap adrift. And I think we've also had come into the pit lane the newest shake Renault Clio, the LDR performance tuning car of Ben Jenkins showing us in the pit lane somewhere. And yet right in the right-hand corner of the screen, you can see that car there. So out of the pit lane it goes now. We'll rejoin, but it has now dropped outside of the top dozen, I'm afraid. So John Lyme pressing on. Got clear track ahead of him now that he's dealt with the Pro-Am Racing Renault Clio. Tyler Motorsport driver who's been very successful in Track Day Championship and Track Day Trophy we've seen him out in in the past. Looking to try and scoop up the first win of the season. It's all going the right way at the moment. 4.3 seconds to the good as into the pit lane comes Ben Abbott. That's the car that had been leading Class C. but dropped a second in the class as a result of Stuart Donovan going through. And I'm afraid into the pit lane comes Ben now. So he's outside of the top ten and he's going to drop like a stone. He's dropped down to fourth already in Class C, I'm afraid. So not the start to the season for the Honda Integra DC5 driver that he would have wished. Now bouncing over the kerbs. That's the car in third place, which is going to be the Justin Roberts and Nicole Drought Honda Civic. Matt Swaffer is right behind as well in fourth position at the wheel of the BMW 1 Series. There's traffic just up the road that they need to try and squeeze their way through and past, which I think might be Charlie Polk. But they couldn't quite get past Charlie Polk before the braking area for the Robert Chicane. So lights on for Justin Roberts and Nicole Drought to try and forewarn Charlie Polk that they want to come through. Charlie's running inside the top ten. He blends out the throttle. Sensible driving. Let's the quicker cars go through. Ben Abbott's car no longer in the pit lane on the shot that I saw there, but also not circulating, so he'll have gone back to the paddock and retired. What was the erstwhile race leading, or Class C leading Honda Civic? He's out of the race. Jordan Jack Wright still dealing with traffic at the moment, getting caught behind the Ginetta, which is going to be Alex Turnbull's car. You need to get past it quickly, though, because they've got the likes of Justin Robertson, the cold route, Matt Swaffer beginning to close in. Whilst for John Lyne in the lead of the race, his BMW, of course, has a bit of a buffer now. He's also now lapped the car in eighth place, so that's number 21 Wayne Cockrell that's now gone down a lap. So it's only the top seven cars that remain on the lead lap at the moment. And the next car that the race leader, John Lyne, is going to catch is going to be the Class C leading car, which will be Stuart Donovan, the reigning champion. Right, side by side, has Matt Swaffer got an overlap here? He may well be able to squeeze his way through here. Is he going to try it? He's up the inside of the Honda Civic of Justin Robertson, the Calder out. They go wheel to wheel through the first part of the Robert Chicane, wheel to wheel through the second part. Matt Swaffer just gets edged towards the kerb, but there was just about enough racing room having been given there. That was good driving between the pair of them. And all of this is now just allowing the Volkswagen Golf of George and Jack Wright to pull away a shade more. So out of Redgate Corner, down the short sprint that brings them in towards Hollywood. And then down through the Craner Curves. Honda Civic again, you could just see it's on the very edge of, of Adesion Air, bouncing around. Just about enough traction and grip from those rear tyres as they compressed going down through the Craner Curves. Matt Swaffer a little bit quicker going into the old hairpin, a little bit quicker coming out of the old hairpin, but still can't quite unlock the door to what would be third place and the final spot on the podium. Not going to be for want of trying, though, from Matt. And now they're squabbling. They're not pulling that far away from the car that they've lapped, which is Charlie Polk, the number 98 Renault Clio. Not far behind them, but is a lap further down. So four minutes to go. Is this the opportunity for Matt Swaffer? Tries to get an undercut coming out of Coppice Corner, but still can't quite do it. So the Justin Roberts and Nicole Drought, number 70 Honda Civic, still hangs on to the final podium spot at the moment. Matt's not going to try anything going in towards the braking area for Roberts. He'll try and get a cleaner exit coming off the corner and see whether on the Wheatcroft straight he can do something heading up towards the braking area for Redgate Corner. Now, some of what he's doing at the moment might just be sizing up where he's got an opportunity or where there might be a gap. Not necessarily wanting to do the overtake just as yet. Because, of course, if you overtake, you're then putting yourself under pressure for the next few laps. If he can work out where is best to do it, then he can overtake as late as he possibly can, maybe on, even on the final lap, and then it gives very little opportunity for the Honda Civic to fight back and try and retake the podium spot. 
but for the moment what Matt's got to do is work out where he can get that podium spot in the first place and that's not going to be easy. So the George and Jack right, right, right Volkswagen Golf edges its way through and past Wayne Cockrell's car that now seems to be slowing out on circuit. Now he's either being very, very helpful to the quicker traffic. No, Wayne's got a problem, I'm afraid. It looks as though the Toyota Celica might not even make it back to the woods of pit lane because he's slowing out there on track. And is he going to pull the car off to the right-hand side? Yes, I think he is. So it looks as though we have lost now the car that was running second in Class C. And sensible driving by Wayne. That knew there was a little gap coming up. Gets the car straight behind the barriers. Not even the need for a yellow flag there. And the car is right beside the marshals. So for John Line, on to what should be the penultimate lap of the race. So the one he started and one more to go. He has now lapped the Class C leading car, which is the reigning champion, the black and light green Toyota of Stuart Donovan. So it's only the top six cars now that remain on the lead lap. And Matt Swaff is also at the wheel of the BMW. Lost a little bit of time to the third-placed Honda Civic on that lap, I would say. Battle of the Mazdas continuing as well. Stephen Docker fighting away with Ben Abbott and Hayden McDonald's car. And right with them is also the little Toyota MR2 as well. And that's going to be the number 19 car, I think that will be. The CR, uh, CBR Motorsport car of Cameron Bell. But for John Line, he is on to very shortly the last lap of the race. He's got 6.6 .6 seconds to play with now as well. So even when he catches some more traffic, he's built enough of a margin so that he can just ease his way past the traffic without having to compromise too much so he can just take his time to thread his way through the traffic and some of the traffic he's coming up against will be squabbling as well because I think we've still got that battle going on between the Peugeot 206 uh, and the Honda Civic which we have yeah coming down towards us now the little Peugeot 206 is in the 22nd position at the moment the number 55 car of Connor Watson and Tom Churchhouse Moving out of the way to let it go through is Amy Allen at the wheel of the Honda Civic. So that's slightly interrupted the battle between the pair of those. But for John Line, on to the last lap of the race. He's just set that last lap that he's done, his best individual lap of the race so far. 122.536. Apologies, no, it wasn't. It was 1 minute 23.021, John Line's last lap that he did. His best lap is 1 minute 20.3. Does look as though Class C is going in the direction of the reigning champion, which is Stuart Donovan. So he is now on his last lap of the race as well. He's been lapped by the race leader. But he still leads Class C at this stage and leads it by about 6.7 seconds. Class D is still being led by the number 38 Ford Fiesta, which stopped quite late into the safety car period, but still has had a good race. The Ford Fiesta of Henry Wright and Kevin Glover. They're running in sixth place at the moment and actually ahead of a Class C leading car so less power to weight ratio in the Class D car but still leading a Class C car which has more power to weight but for John Line final time out of Coffee's corner and is heading down towards the checker flag the clock has already ticked to zero looks as though John Line is going to scoop up the first win of the season in the MSVT track day championship for 2024 out of the Robert Chicane for Tyler Motorsport for John Line for the BMW E36 it's a win in the first race of the season completes 31 laps and it's going to have a reasonably handy lead at the end of it George and Jack Wright in their Volkswagen Golf finish in second place Justin Roberts and Nicole Drought come through to finish in third with Matt Swaffer still on their coattails in fourth place fifth place should be classified regardless of what happens the number 38 car of Henry Wright and Kevin Glover because they were the last of the cars that were on the lead lap so they'll be one of the later cars to take the chequered flag the car in sixth place has already taken it because it was lapped which is going to be the class C winner which is Stuart Donovan and then it's going to be the Thompson Johansson Clio in seventh Charlie Polk's Clio in eighth and we'll wait and see what happens for ninth because the number 39 Honda Civic the team Rabia car of Paul McHugh and William Heslop has got a one lap penalty hanging over it so they may well not come the official result to be classified in ninth place they may all tumble down through the order to something like 15th something like that by the time you add another lap onto where they would have finished something like that so that's the car that's just heading up towards redgate corner now in front of the shot a few seconds ago so a few more cars to take the checker flag including the class d leading car so there goes the number 38 ford fiesta the white car with the blue flash down it and the little orange um, edges to it that is going to be the car that has secured top honours in class d for henry wright and for kevin glover with a what must have been a, a very good pit stop for them say so there's only so much you can do but they pitted i think at the right time i thought they were late to pit but they clearly well versed with their pit stop got in and out 
in the requisite time. No more, but certainly no less, otherwise they'd have picked up a penalty. So we should be able to confirm the results for the first round of the 2024 MSVT Track Day Championship. John Lyne claims the win from the father and son pairing of George and Jack Wright with Justin Robertson and Nicole Drought completing the podium. Matt Swaffer was there in fourth place and the Class D winning car of Wright and Glover finishing in fifth place with the Class C leading car of the reigning champion Stuart Donovan completing the top six. Despite the spin, Thompson and Johansson finished in seventh place out of Charlie Polk who was there in eighth place. McHugh in his Honda Civic was ninth and it was the Burnham and Vos Ford Fiesta that completed the top 10. 11th place, it was a busy race for Alex Turnbull in the Ginetta as he finished in 11th place. Uh, Docker was there in 12th place. The Toyota uh, of Bell was there in 13th with Ben Jenkins despite a pit stop finishing in 14th place. Colin Wells had a spin or two, he was there in 15th place. And so on, you can see the rest of the finishers in the opening round of the MSVT Track Day Championship. The fastest lap of the race did go to the erstwhile race leading Volkswagen Golf of George and Jack Ryan with a minute 19.822 and they will all pack things away from here at Donington Park and head to Brands Hatch for the second round of the 2024 championship season on the 18th and 19th of May. So thank you for joining us for the opening race of the season for the MSVT Track Day Championship. A couple of safety cars, some great battles. They'll do it all again next time out. Until next time, it's goodbye.